Choosing a soldering iron sounds like a trivial task. But I assure you it's not. If you're going to get a soldering iron for electronics, there's a lot of different things that you got to consider. And again, today's modern electronics, they're not forgiving if it's not ESD safe or even temperature controlled. So for example, I have a Weller iron here that is not temperature controlled. Although they do make temperature control irons and they actually look exactly the same. This one's not, but it is ESD safe. All matter of fact, all the irons here are ESD safe. And so that is one of the most important things that it's ESD safe. Because you're going to be working on electronics in some way or form. And you don't, an ESD stands for electrostatic discharge. So you don't want to zap the electronics basically with static electricity. So basically what it means is those irons are grounded. And it goes without saying, but never touch a hot iron or even change the tip while it's hot because it's, it's easy to get burned on them. And trust me, I've got burnt and it's not fun. Let me tell you that. So back to this, we have the most important thing and that is temperature control as well as the ESD. So temperature control, that means you're going to be able to control the temperature. So let me give you a quick example. So here's a temperature controlled unit. You can see these LEDs are blinking now when I turn it on. I have the temperature set to 350 degrees. It's going to start heating the iron. And you're going to start seeing it going up. And that iron will heat up to 350 degrees and it'll maintain that temperature. So we'll go above it or below it. And there's slight error tolerance that, you know, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be darn near close. So temperature control is, I would say, that the most important with ESD safe. Now we're going to move on to wattage. You're going to see that the wattage here, and I've marked these, this is only a 40 watt. This is a 60 watt. And this one's a 75 watt. Now, they don't come with labels like that. But you ask why wattage is important. Well, wattage is important because if you're going to use uh, any of the uh, the uh, braided uh, solder wick, it's going to it's going to pull that temperature away. It's going to it's going to sink that temperature. And also, if you have a large area or like a ground plane on the circuit board, it's also going to sink the temperature. It's going to it's going to pull that temperature out from the iron and want to sink it. So you really need the wattage to be able to keep that iron up. So for example, this 40 watt iron that I have here, when I put the solder wick and try to use it with the solder wick, and the solder ends up solidifying because the temperature drops on it. And the solder wick sticks to the board. That's something you don't want to happen because it just doesn't have the ability to keep up. So while I would say wattage is the second most important thing, the tip style and availability is, also, is probably the third thing that you want to consider. So for example, this... Weller iron takes ST8 tips, and so, therefore, I have to buy a Weller ST8 tip on it. This iron is a Tenma iron, and I have to buy, and I'm not sure what the number is, but I have to buy that Tenma tip that works with that iron. Now, this iron here, this takes a 900M tip, and I'll tell you, this is the most common tip. So this is nice because you can get some different manufacturers of both the iron and the tip. So that really helps price-wise and availability of the tips. So this particular brand that I have here, it calls for a 900M tip, and that's what that is, is a 900M tip. And this one is actually called a T12 tip. This is really nice because basically, the tip, the tip itself 
is also the heater and the temperature sensor all in one unit. And it takes up to 75 watts too if the power base is able to do 75 watts. And that power base that I showed you did do 75 watts. That's for this iron right here. So really what I'm going to say is I really like this the best because the tips are easy to replace. And again, this the soldering iron is not on. Trust me on that. And I can take the tips and easily replace them. That's how easy it is to replace the tips on the on the the T12. And the tips aren't terribly expensive. They're about anywhere between ten to fifteen U.S. dollars. And the iron itself probably runs, I'm gonna say, about eighty U.S. dollars. And that's probably as of I'm gonna say, maybe I'm gonna say June. 23rd, uh, I'm sorry, 2023. So this by far I like the most. And it recovers quickly. Like I said, the tips are easy to change. So if I were to do it again, I would end up just with this one, not these three. And that's the thing. When I started out, I really didn't have good guidance on what kind of iron there was and what kind of tips they use. It's really confusing. So even I got confused. And so that's why I'm trying to share it with you today. And if you really like this kind of information, and again, it's non, I'm not going, I'm not pushing a particular brand or anything like that. I'm just going and telling you a little bit about the irons. If you really like the information, please like and subscribe. It, it helps keep this kind of stuff going and the information flowing to you. I would say also some of the better soldering irons have the ability to have a memory location you can store like up to three settings of heat. That's just a convenience that you don't really need. You're probably going to use one particular heat, but there is circumstances where you might want to increase the heat temporarily if you have a big connector or so forth. So I would say that's probably the fourth thing you might want to look for is that it's able to memorize, uh, well, maybe up to three different heats or so. But tips make a big difference, and I want to go over here something here, which is uh, tip style. So, for example, this is, it's hard to see, but I'm going to bring it a little closer to the camera, and you can see it's a chisel tip. This is a bigger chisel tip. This is a conical tip. And this is a knife tip. And like I said, that comes in all the different irons. You can get it. No matter what iron style, you can get pretty much those different style tips. There's other styles, too, um, and we could get carried away on it. But for sake of an example, I'm going to uh, use this knife tip that we have on this iron to demonstrate why I think it's the most versatile tip. So to start with, this tip has a lot of mass to it, and it's able to definitely do like a ground plane like here as well as do easily and I don't have this iron on right now but for sake example it easily can go over and do the solder way so that's one of the beauties of this particular tip and in addition you can use it also with the flat side and you can drag solder basically you're going to put on this bunch of flux, a little bit of solder on the iron, and you can drag solder it across. But you you know, you definitely still gotta be careful that you don't if you're gonna use that method that you're not gonna get any solder balls. In addition, you can use the pointy side and you can just go and do the individual pins on the pointy side. So it's really a versatile tip. Again, that's my favorite tip. And the T twelve is my favorite iron. And I could, like I said, they're relatively inexpensive. So I hope this re really found this helpful. This way you don't have to buy as many irons as I did to find the right type of iron. Like and subscribe. Thanks.